In some ways, I have no choice but to talk about race as a Tillman scholar and a military veteran. Like Frederick Douglass, I love this country and what it claims to stand for in the Declaration of Independence and in the Constitution. But in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., I also want and need America to be true to what it said on paper. After graduating from the Air Force Academy in 2009 and finishing up my master's degree the next year, I encountered a decade of televised killings of unarmed Black people, often at the hands of individuals who wore a different kind of uniform than my own, but who claimed to be called like I was to protect and defend the people of the United States. When I was met with these glaring contradictions, I couldn't help but to see myself differently when I put on my uniform each day. A uniform not unlike the one my father wore throughout his 28 years of service as an enlisted man in the Army. I began to ask myself questions like, what's the relationship between my uniform and my black skin? What did it mean that people smiled at me when I was in my dress blues, but that they would feel threatened by me when I wore jeans and a hoodie? What does it mean that the same Americans I signed up to defend in 2009 would go on to kill Trayvon Martin, Laquan McDonald, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Freddie Gray, Alton Sterling, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd over the next decade? Right now, I see a fundamental cultural and structural changes being brought about that I had never dreamed possible. From the proposals to rename army bases whose gates bear the names of Confederate officers who waged war against this country, to the tearing down of Confederate monuments, and the action many corporations and nonprofits are now taking in support of people of color. We can still do more, though, and I am hopeful that we can continue to join together in interracial coalitions to realize the dreams of Frederick Douglass and Martin Luther King Jr. The fight against racism is one that will require endurance and that will require fundamentally transforming our minds and the ways that we interact with one another. I believe that we can come together and identify what Frederick Douglass calls our common causes and that we can abolish racial inequities through policies and initiatives centered on human rights and social justice. We are at a moment right now in America where we need to keep marching, to keep talking, to keep listening, to keep reading, and to begin voting in ways that demonstrate that we as a nation will not tolerate racism and gender discrimination. Late in Frederick Douglass's life, uh, when a young man asked him what to do in order to become a great leader uh, for social change, Douglass responded with three words, agitate, agitate, agitate. I recommend people use their unique talents and gifts in whatever position they hold to advocate on behalf of oppressed people. As Ibram Kendi, author of How to Be an Anti-Racist and a host of others have shown us, not being racist is not enough. We've banded together in ways that I've never seen before. However, I do know that there's still a long way for us to go. But if I didn't think our country could change, I wouldn't be speaking about race in America. Mm -hmm.